Welcome to the NFL Salary Exploitation for Week 15. I'm Jason Gilboa, J. Copo 11. With me is Russell Clay, at Russell J. Clay. Taking a look at salaries across the industry for Week 15, DraftKings, FanDuel, and Yahoo. And uh, obviously coming off an interesting week where, I mean, basically it was a, a value week. It, it was the value week at wide receiver. Um, the chalk value hit, Robbie Anderson, Karen Meredith, Taylor Gabriel. Um the contrarian awesome chalk hit, which wasn't contrarian and wasn't chalk and wasn't anything Marquise Lee. Really putting together a solid year. I'm going to give myself a nice pat on the back here. How about Marquise Lee? He's really turning this career around. At receiving Allen Robinson on the season. How about we give a round of applause to Marquise Lee, Jason? No, as an Allen Robinson owner, no. Let's go. Yeah. You make it seem like he's been around the league for six, seven years. Who, Marquise Lee? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's only been three. (laughs) So, jumping into quarterbacks this week, uh, your first one here looking at Colin Kaepernick. On the road against Atlanta, coming off a decent game against the Jets. Obviously struggled in that snow game, but for the most part, he's been a good fantasy quarterback since he stepped under center. Yeah, and the Rams are going to make any defense look good. Atlanta's a bad defense. Uh, Kaepernick is exactly the type guy that can take advantage of of their weakness at the linebackers. Um, I I expect him to flourish. Uh, I think he's he's extremely viable on on all sites. Um, So I'm certainly going to be looking at him, um, at least from a tournament sense. Not quite cash, but I, I think you could use him in cash on DK at 58. Yeah, I agree. I think 5,800. Anyone under 6K with a reasonable rushing floor and multi-touchdown upside, I mean, I, he's been a guy who's been very solid in that that scoring. Um, and and I'm a fan of 7,500 is not that bad, especially given that guys are priced back up. Um, you know, Rodgers isn't really cheap again. You know, right. that's been the last two weeks based on matchup. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Jameis Winston next on the road against Dallas. Primetime game. Uh, what do you see with him? Uh, yeah, against this Dallas team that their secondary isn't very good. Mike Evans coming off two bad weeks in a row. I think that's a prime stack um, to be contrarian this week. Obviously, teams are going to try to shut him down every week, but some secondaries just don't have the personnel to do it. I think Dallas is one of those. Uh, Dallas going to be able to probably run the ball on, on the Buccaneers, even though they've they've been better of late. Uh, I think this is a nice regression game for both teams, for Dallas coming off of a bad loss and uh, the the Bucks kind of playing over their head the last few weeks. I kind of think this is a matchup where um, Dallas wins, but Jameis is throwing the entire game. Uh, so I really like the game flow of this game. So a Zeke Jameis Evans stack is certainly something I'm going to be looking at. Oh man, you are contrarian, sir. Yeah, I, I think that's you know I think you're going to get low ownership, especially you know after Le'Veon Bell, what he did last week after. Uh, David Johnson, what he's been doing the whole season. Zeke's going to be cheaper and, and lower owned, um, and Jameis is going to be firing away in this game. Yeah, I mean, definitely an interesting one. And I feel like over the last few weeks, the Sunday night games have just been ones where we look at and go, I don't know how much exposure I want to it. Like last night, I didn't, I didn't have any exposure. Yeah, yeah, me either. Uh, and I felt decent about it. I was worried about Odell Beckham. But uh, obviously, you know, only got the one big touchdown. But yeah, I mean, there was there was some upside in that game. But I think this one will be a little better. Yeah, definitely. Uh, moving on to running backs, a uh, guy we talked about last week, and a guy you got to be stoked with your call about the Tevin Coleman two touchdowns, you know, against the Rams. You know, we don't we don't have to brag on here. Hashtag humble brag. Tevin Coleman two touchdowns. That that's all one hashtag. Um, you know. Some weeks things just work out. Obviously, you know, he stole some of Devonta's production there. I don't think that'll continue throughout the season. But against the San Francisco team, you know, they're both going to eat. I could see both over 20 as a viable thing, especially if Julio misses again. Uh, Tevin and Devonta, whoever gets the goal line touches, I think you gamble on both. I think you can make lineups with both. Uh Tevin 5K on DK, 6,500 on FanDuel. I still think it's viable. Twenty dollars on Yahoo. Uh, I'm 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 firing away with with all three of those prices. Is he cash? 
not on FanDuel, um, just because I don't think you want to do that on FanDuel. Uh, I don't think that's the correct way to roster construct. DraftKings, I mean, in that flex spot, I'm not. I'm not against it against San Fran. Uh, this could be a game where we see Coleman's first long run of the season. Obviously, most of his big plays have been in the passing game. I think we could see some big, some big runs from him uh, with that. You know, low four four speed. Obviously, uh, was a, a huge, uh, big play threat at Indiana. So I, I think that's going to be what we see there this week. <laughs> And I don't even know if Julio Jones is going to come back this week. I, I don't know why he would. Why would he? Yeah, why would he? They, like they you, should dominate at home. You have you know? a wet, yeah, you just went on, on the road, took on the Rams, and annihilated them. It was no real issue. You have to imagine it's going to be the same thing. I mean, San Francisco is probably going to put up more points, but it's still going to be a two, three touchdown lead to come the end of the game. Right, and I mean, it's also a stacking option with Matt Ryan. If you like Matt Ryan this week, I think you have to play one of the running backs with him, um, especially it, yeah. especially um, if Julio's out. Even if Julio's in, I think I think you play uh, one of the running backs with him. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, totals, I don't think I've seen him come out this week, but obviously you got to imagine Atlanta's going to be one of the higher ones, if not the highest. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Jerick McKinney, you're talking about here next. Cheap guy um, taking on Indianapolis at home. Obviously, we know this defense. Um, they're missing their you know, linebacker, DePaul Jackson. Lamar Miller torched him this past week. I can see something like that happening again. Jerick McKinnon is a very sneaky play with the amount of touches he's getting. He's just getting so much volume right now. I understand Asiata is getting the goal line work, but... Generally speaking, with the with the touch distribution and with the touches are, are surrounding the game flow for the Vikings, McKinnon is a, a very viable option. Um, you know, you just you look at this Colts matchup, you kind of expect this game to go back and forth a little bit. Uh, Vikings D isn't quite what we've seen. Um, of late, they are good at home, but no Harrison Smith. I'd imagine there are some big plays in the passing game. If if the the Colts get out to a decent lead here, um, I think we could see a lot of McKinnon. And even if they don't, uh, we're seeing McKinnon being used a ton in basically that pseudo feature role where he probably doesn't deserve it, but he's getting it anyway. Twelve bucks on Yahoo. Uh, I I'd say he's a strong favorite to get over ten points this week. Uh, even in 0.5 PPR. Yeah, in a 4K price tag, I mean, in a flex spot, you know, I don't mind this week for McKinnon. I mean, yeah. a little bit cheaper than than Coleman. I mean, you see a thousand, but that thousand may come into play somewhere else. Um, and, and the interesting thing about those two, McKinnon's guaranteed to get more touches. You know, it's just Coleman's such a higher upside play. Yeah, I mean, in terms of big playmaking ability, we've seen it from Coleman and McKinnon. We haven't. And I think a lot of that has to do with the offensive line. Yeah. Yet, in this matchup, I mean, I'm not particularly worried because on the opposing side, this defense doesn't generate pressure. They haven't been a good run defense. Um, they struggle against backs in the passing game. I mean, that's McKinnon's forte right there. I mean, that's what yeah. he does. Well, and it's funny we describe McKinnon as not really a big play threat, and he hasn't been this year. That's his, like, M.O. That's, like, what he is. He's a big play threat. But, you know, when big play threats don't have any big plays, it's kind of ugly. But uh, I, I think, you know, in this game, I, I think it is a decent matchup. Yeah, definitely. Uh, moving on to wide receivers, Devontae Adams coming off a big game against Seattle. Um Still not really priced up like an elite wide receiver, even though he's posting top 10 wide receiver numbers this year. Yep. yep. Wide receiver eight in PPR this year. Uh, obviously, that's only relevant on DK, but 6,100, I mean, that's so cheap. I understand the Bears have been a good secondary this year, and they have, and this is a tough matchup for the Packers. But we're seeing Aaron Rodgers round into form. Uh, Bears season is over. This this one could could get ugly in my opinion, and on all three sides, Adams has just been so good this year. Uh, I, I think we continue to fire away on all sides. Sixty nine hundred on Fanduel. He was, you know, he was three percent owned um, in some in some main slates. Uh, he was like one percent owned on on Yahoo last week in the baller. Uh, I mean. 
I, I'm just going to continue to use him. I don't know. But, yeah. I mean, we've seen Randall Cobb. I mean, you know. Yeah, it's it's decided. Adams is the number two, you know. Yeah, I think that's been solidified basically for a while now. I mean, yeah. Nelson's still number one. Nelson seems like he's back to his usual self right now. Uh, 12 touchdowns know. in 13 games. Yeah, unbelievable. unbelievable. Yeah, so I mean, I think we're looking at basically – uh, there's no real running game. I mean, I know we saw Ty Montgomery, but he left the game, you know, third or fourth quarter, whatever that was. I mean, they could be back to basically – they are going to be pass happy anyway, but even more so. Yeah, I, I really like the Packers going forward, even in less than optimal matchups. You just fire away. Rodgers is absolutely on fire right now. Yeah. Uh, Steve Smith, you're looking at here against a Philly defense that's been – giving up the home run plays. I mean, we saw the one to Deshaun Jackson, but really over the last few four, five, six weeks, I mean, no pressure on the QB, uh, and it's really shown in the secondary especially. Yeah, they're bad. They're bad. Uh, they were they were good early in the year, uh, and I don't know what happened. I mean, I don't really think they lost like a, a huge piece, but it just seems like both with their offense and their defense, teams started to – figure out this game plan uh and you know start to be able to take the stuff they do well away and once they did they haven't seemed to be able to recover this year so uh steve smith you know kind of a guy that's going to go undervalued and, and underpriced at this stage um barring him going off tonight that'll raise his ownership probably five to ten percent but I think you could get some really some really low ownership on these prices too. Uh, Nineteen dollars on Yahoo, fifty three hundred on on DK. Um, tough range on Fanduel for him to fit in for me, but I still think he's very viable in tournaments. Yeah, I like him in GPPs this week, and I mean we're we're obviously in week fifteen where we're starting to look at. We don't take this into account early on in the year, but we do a little bit later on. But are these teams playing for something? And, Who's and giving up? Is? Yeah, the Jets. Can confirm they've given up. Yes. I think that was – after the first Carlos Hyde run, I think that was pretty much yeah. summed up. Or even when after the run last defense, night. When the run defense gives up almost 200 yards, they've given up. Yeah, that's done. So, uh, shocker here on this next one. This is a guy we freaking <laughs> talk about every every week, uh, Marquise Lee. Yeah. What do, you, what do you have to say this week? Um, so as we saw last week in a tough matchup for wide receivers, Marquise Lee kind of sneaks under the radar. Now he did make a big play on Xavier Rhodes for 38 yards, but generally speaking, A-Rob, A-Rob's taking the brunt of it this year. He gets all the tough matchups and Lee just gets to run under the middle, like underneath and like against the second and third, uh, options. So, I mean, he's looked great. So him looking great plus getting, uh, you know, second and third cornerback matchups, and and I, I just think this is a really good matchup. Four four thousand on DK is really where I'm looking at him. Uh, tough to fit him in on Fanduel at fifty seven, but Yahoo and DraftKings, I think he's really viable. Yeah, I mean, we no Alan Hearns um, right now. I mean, you know, his status is up in the air. But I mean, even when Hearns has been out there, which you may or may not have noticed, because Hearns has been. A ghost. Yeah, yeah a ghost this year. Yeah. So, you know, Lee's been that secondary option. We haven't really seen Thomas, you know, evolve into anything in Jacksonville. He's not even, you know, he's on the IR. The, the running game is nothing. It it just sits up well. I mean, Lee's in a really good spot to just keep producing these types of numbers. Yeah, he's the only one on that entire offense making plays right now, and it's just going to – I think it's going to continue that way with how – how these players have played. So if he's the only one, you know, really making plays, his role is is really solidified at this spot. I mean, there's a lot of good press coming out about him right now from from Jacksonville. So I, I'd imagine I'd imagine his role continues. <laughs> yeah. Um, what, what do you see? Are you laughing at over there? I said the good press is coming from you. No, that's what I'm saying. It was coming from me, and now. It's evolved into Jacksonville fans are starting to see the light. We're all happy. You know, we're all there happy. Is no, over there, there is no light in Jacksonville. There is no light. The, the quote from the article I read was, the light in a sea of darkness or something like that. Wow, well done. That's well done. Yeah. 
very well written. So, uh, tight end here, Cameron Bright, uh, in a sneaky yeah. good matchup here against Dallas. Um, I like him more on DraftKings. FanDuel price still a little bit iffy for me, but I, I like him across the board. Yeah, Yahoo as well, not in my lineup construction, but I'm just looking at this DK price. Uh, Dallas, obviously not great against the tight end. Uh, again, if I think Jameis is going to be tossing the tossing the ball over the all over the field all day, then I'm looking at Braid as well, along with Evans. So, uh, obviously, the whole stack didn't work out last week. I think this is a good one. Buccaneers are pretty good. I think we have to accept that at this stage in the season. And uh, obviously, Dallas coming off a tough game last week. I think this is another tough matchup for them. So I, I like this. I like this for Brait. Uh, I think he could hit value pretty pretty easily at 3,800. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, obviously a big red zone guy. So, I mean, that helps things out uh, for a Buccaneers team that's going to need to score. Next one here, Delaney Walker. Um, tough yeah, matchup. Little, a little contrarian for me here. Um, but that DK price again, and I like that Yahoo price at 19. Um, 4K, I know it's a tough matchup, but it's Delaney Walker. It's a must win for the Titans. I know he got shut down last week against the Broncos, but I just look at this matchup and say, okay, they need Delaney Walker, um, you know, if they're going to pass it all. So if I'm going to him, I think 4K in the flex is a really viable option. That's so cheap for him, especially, you know, with all the high upside games he's shown this year. And FanDuel's an easy fade at 6,100. Yeah, easy easy fade there. Um, but I think Yahoo and, and DK, pretty interesting. I mean, Casey's. I mean, Casey's is usually a team I don't like to target with. Yes. Most positions. I mean, especially tight ends. I mean, they've been one of the better defenses over the last few years. But as we've kind of seen things over the last few weeks, algorithms start to really drop down guys in tougher matchups, and they do here at DK Fanduel not so much. I mean, we saw it with the Packers over the last two weeks. They dropped their price down significantly. Yep. Yep. It's very so, true. Um, defenses here, Packers uh, taking on Chicago. And a relatively valued defense this week, and, and obviously coming off a forty-two interception game, um, they look good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they look good. Uh, obviously, they're not good, but they're good enough against the Bears to get the job done. Uh, Jordan Howard, a slight worry. The run defense isn't looking quite as great as it was early in the year, but this Packers defense is about to go on a a really good roll. Uh, just overall, and with how cheap they are across all three sites, I'm certainly looking at them against the Bears team. I know Matt Barkley's been looking okay. That is an illusion. That is when you're in the desert. What do they call it? Um, an oasis. Kinda. No. Mirage. Mirage. There you go. It's a mirage, uh, like the casino. Uh, but I don't know. Matt Barkley isn't great. He's not a good quarterback. They have no NFL wide receivers right now that uh, should be starting. I like Cam Meredith. He's a wide receiver four on an NFL team. Oh, and he's, stop. And he's masquerading as a wide receiver one. That's not good. Um, so I, I like the Packers a lot. I think there's a chance at a pick six. Uh, so when I, I'm j always chasing that upside. Yeah, I mean, there definitely is, and especially if it's a Chicago team, regardless of who's under center, unless it's, you know, Brian Hoyer, then you fade. But, then you fade. Then yeah. you absolutely fade, yeah. yeah. Um, next one for Giants. I mean, this is, this is a good, good defense. This is a good team. This is a good team. And, I mean, I know Eli is, like, super weird. Like, he's a weird dude. Like, I don't want to know him in real life. Uh, Odell Beckham's a weird dude. Like, Rashad Jennings is, like, really boring. He's, like, the most boring. He's probably the most boring player in the NFL. Um, and Will Ty, really boring. Like, Sterling Shepard, he's okay. Uh, Victor Cruz is, like, slightly below average. He's, like, okay. It's just, like, it's such an okay offense. But this defense makes big plays every week, and I'm kind of getting excited about them. Uh, against this Detroit team, I know – uh, Matthew Stafford's been great this year. I'm not questioning that. I just think this might be a tough matchup for him. Uh, Detroit already can't run the ball. So I, I think the Giants can put a little more emphasis on the pass game where they have some just uh, emerging stars. Um, Landon Collins already emerged. Eli Apple looks great. Uh, you know, they stole Janoris Jenkins away from the Rams. He looks pretty darn good now. Uh, 
I, that defense is good. Uh, and I don't know that Detroit has enough firepower to really average that out. So 2,900 on DK, I'm in. Uh, I mean, yeah. Uh, on the road for Detroit, tough matchup. Matthew Stafford obviously dealing with, you know, the hand issue, was throwing with the glove. I mean, not going to be at 100%. I know that's for sure. Um, I think reports that he might have actually torn ligaments. So I, that's huge. I mean, on the road, yeah. you know, you throw Janoris Jenkins on basically Golden Tate, who's been, you know, Matthew, awesome. Matthew Golden Stafford's Tate's safety been. blanket, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, Giants have been not as bad as they were before against tight ends. It, as you can point out, I mean, everything kind of lines up here and, and they're relatively cheap uh, on DraftKings. I mean, below 3K, you know, the price is really across here. I mean, there's still a lot of upside. And, you know, if Theo Riddick does play, obviously that's good, that's good, that's good, good, good. But if he doesn't, you know, what do they have back there? No, Dwayne Washington and Zach Center, like, they they lose that receiving threat if, if Riddick isn't in there, and that's a big problem. Yeah, I think so. So, I mean, I'm, I'm looking to fire away. Uh, in this range, because I'm not really looking to actually pay up, I think there are a couple of value options this week um, and kind of saving a couple hundred bucks. Certainly. So uh, it's going to wrap things up with the NFL salary exploitation for week 15. If you want to check out Russell's article, you can head on over to dailyfantasycafe.com uh, and be sure to be on the lookout for the rest of our week 15 content.